Hello, folks, and welcome to Scrub School Titanfall. I'm Kieran Dave, your host, and I'm going to be uh, introducing someone f to help me with this cool new project we've got, which is the project is really me, because I'm not that good at Titanfall, but I happen to fall in and meet somebody who's just totally amazing at it, runs a fantastic YouTube, Frothy Omen. Hi, Frothy. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm really excited that you're going to be helping me out here. So, like, the we're going to be doing some other content back and forth. The purpose of these is to kind of review some gameplay by someone who's you know played some and knows how to play the game, but not not a raw noob, but has a lot has a long way to go, I think, before I'm actually quote unquote good at Titanfall. And maybe uh, other people can uh, kind of look, see the same mistakes, and correct them. And uh, maybe we'll even have some challenges that everybody can try. Yeah, it's all about learning, all about improving. Yeah. Um, so this is like a totally different format than anything I've ever done. I don't know if you've ever done this, but what we're going to do is basically talk over some uh, game footage um, and talk about like a game I played. It was just, uh, I, I think, not even three days earlier from the time we recorded this. A uh, pretty recent game and uh, talk about what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right and what we can improve. And uh, I've got this little like uh, play by play thing that we can do here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set that up and yeah, should be should be all ready to go. All right, let's get going. Let's get, ah, let's get going. Fantastic. So you got control of the the, the footage. Let's go through. So I'm doing a, a I'm doing a pretty standard yeah um, pretty standard uh, loadout. Um, uh, you know, just a, a car, a uh, wingman. Uh, my Titan is sort of set up with I would call it, I call it the frothy omen version of the arc cannon. <laughs> oh boy! It is basically exactly the your recommended loadout because uh, okay, I'm, I'm finishing up my G5 challenges right now. Okay. Yeah, excellent for Goosers. Probably one, probably the best for Goosers, actually, that are canon. Yeah, unfortunately, in campaign, a lot of people don't know to eject. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Unless they use the auto eject. You know, you yeah. see them just fly up on auto. Yeah, yeah. It's really unfortunate. You watch them in their ogre just kind of hobble around, and they just kind of just kind of plop on the ground. It's really unfortunate. Yeah. You can see me here struggling for a good lane. I was taking a different one entirely because I don't play the card very awesome. Like, awesome... I, I, like it's not my primary weapon. In fact, I yep. almost never play this way. Um, and so you can see me like struggling to try and find areas where the lane is right. Like normally I take a much mm -hmm. higher lane and go back over by the hangar mm -hmm. um, because that's a good place to set up with the carbine, which I've been playing a lot with. But yeah, and case, I actually, I actually okay, so yeah, this so you pull off this move in just a second here. So you're gonna shoot this guy in the back uh, with your car, and then I re I really love how you decide to take the wall and you actually hop up and almost go right over this guy on the roof. Um, unfortunately, he does end up getting you, but that was a really really nice move. Um, you were definitely thinking like perfectly. Your execution was just a little lacking, but I mean, I think that with practice, you're gonna be able to pull stuff like that off all the time. Yeah, you know, I I it, th he had that wicked gun there that um. The was it the LMG? Yes, oh, it's so brutal, and that just it, it totally cleaned me up. It only takes like two shots, right? And he he already had the line on me, so maybe it was overly ambitious. But <sighs> I think it's closer to like three or four, as a matter of fact. Um, but you know, it's it's a really hard gun to use. Um, but you were so close that I think that you know it just yeah. it didn't even matter. But um, one thing I did note is after that guy killed you on that roof is you weren't going back and looking at that roof a second time. You kind of just ignored it and let it go. And there's a second guy with the carbine that was up there too. So I think it's really important to note that once you do end up getting killed from somewhere is that you know you go back to that location and look for that guy that's going to be there. Yeah. Um, you know, as you see, you just died a third time from it from the guy still on that roof. So uh, you know, if you're looking out for him and going after him in particular, you can mop him up at least and get him off that power position. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good point. I was I kept assuming that uh, he would be gone, <laughs> and because I was sure that someone else in the team was going to get rid of him because he was in such a good spot. I shouldn't have made that assumption. It was a mistake. Yeah, you would think that you know he's kind of you know playing Titanfall. You think he'd be moving around, but he's kind of playing Call of Duty, just sitting on that roof still. So you know sometimes people just struggle to get out of that mindset. Yeah, well, it paid off for him in this case. True, I suppose. So I see you got your Titan now. You're running around with that capacitor and then the Strider. I I miss playing the Strider. I love the Strider a whole lot. I just feel like I I do a lot better with the Atlas, but man, I I miss playing the Strider all the time. It's so much fun. Yeah, I have a pretty bad matchup right here against the chain gun. I always feel like I'm at a, a big disadvantage. Um, I managed to get him there just because I think I got a little bit lucky. But um, uh, No, I, I think that was really, really well played. Um, I'm actually surprised because you had that vortex shield up, and it seemed like he was still shooting you with that chain gun, and you weren't grabbing anything. I'm not sure why that was. It, I thought you should have won that much more handily than you actually did. Yeah, so. well, I don't know if you've noticed, but lately some of the Titanfall lobbies have had issues with lag. 
Um, like, you know, sometimes it feels like you get you shoot somebody and nothing happens, or suddenly yeah. people are there when they weren't there before. So I think that I was actually a victim of that there, where... Yeah, I, I will definitely say that the the Vortex Shield in particular does seem to have a, a latent period. So, like, when you actually hit the button to bring it up, there's, like, about, like, a, I don't know, maybe a quarter second or so where it's actually not functioning while your Titan is raising his arm up. And if you use something like electric smoke or a particle wall, it drops immediately. Like, you know, there's no, there's no latent period. So... It's kind of weird that the, board, that the Vortex Shield has that, and I think you might have fallen victim to that, actually. Now oh, that interesting. I, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, it's like if you've ever um, had a guy shooting an archer rocket at you, one really neat thing is that if you try to catch the archer at the very last second, the archer will still hit you, and then the game will freak out and be like, oh, he was supposed to catch that, and it'll spawn another archer, and it'll just kind of float out from inside your Titan back into your shield. It's pretty hilarious looking. <laughs> what the heck? That sounds amazing. Ouch. Oh, man, that was a tough corner to walk around. I got... I wasn't watching my map there very carefully. <laughs> I should have seen that and been like, nope, not going to walk around that corner. Yeah, you got to stare at that many maps sometimes, which is hard in this game, because there's always so much stuff going on all around you that, you know, you, you got to keep your eyes moving all over the place. Sometimes you miss the most apparent stuff. It happens yeah. to everyone. Yeah, I was. Pr I, was I knew I was, we were going to be showing this to you, so I was try-harding. You can see me occasionally checking the score and being like, nope, got to try harder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so you're getting a nice little rodeo going off here. Let's see yeah. how this ends up going. I don't remember how this actually ends up going for you. You get a, you get a little jump kick there. I think you got a little. Uh, I got a little excited. I got a little excited. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> so because I, I, think, I, think I was afraid he had a smart for the pistol. Satchel. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was aiming for the satchel. I was afraid he was going to come out with the. Uh, uh, I was dropping back because I was afraid he was going to come out with a smart pistol. That happens to me a lot in campaign lobbies, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm always afraid of it. I live in fear. Yeah. Oh yeah, it happens just all the time. But you're back in your Titan now, so let's see if we're able to pick off a few more grunts with this arc cannon. I don't, I, I don't think you're even able to really see anybody going up in this entire gameplay, if I remember from what I previously watched. I don't think I seen a single guy eject that you could have got. Like everyone auto ejected right in your face, just like this guy. Yep, 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 yep. And then by then I didn't. See, so this is why I was thinking that sometimes I don't like um, mm -hmm. the, the the capacitor because I could have goosed that guy if I didn't have the capacitor. I could have got yeah, to the, and... the, the one third mark and, and killed him. Yeah, like your your aim was awesome there. By the way, like you tracked him perfectly. It's just it was just a matter of the capacitor not letting you shoot early enough, unfortunately. Yeah. And here's another one that you auto ejects, and you just didn't really have much of a chance to get him. Yeah. But that's good though. You know, right before you were doomed, you know, you let your arc cannon charge. You did take that, you know, that one uh, hail mary shot, just hoping you get him. It's really important to actually do that. I mean, you may only hit like one out of a hundred that way, but if your titan's dying anyways, just take the shot. I mean, what do you have to lose? Yeah, I so, guess that's true, huh? Like, why why bother not taking the shot? Yeah, I mean, unless, you know, you got a Titan barreling down on you with a 40 and you're scared of him getting a crit and just straight up killing you. I mean, that's reasonable, but, I mean, you were in a completely safe spot. Just go for that shot before you eject. That was really, really well played. Thanks. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit lucky here on Colony. Colonies, I, I actually like this map a lot. Um, I know that some people don't like it because of the lag issues, but uh, this mm -hmm. is one of my favorite maps. In fact, I would say that this is probably my favorite map from the original map pack. Yeah, um, you know, this is one of my favorites as well, and I think this is a favorite among competitive players. Uh, you see this map played in, in, well, when the competitive scene was still, you know, alive and strong, uh, this map was one of the most played and one of the most popular, and it's still one of my favorites to this day. Yeah, so... Um, uh, I feel I always feel like I'm at a disadvantage with a car. I know it's a fantastic gun. I know it's very popular and it's it's a very mm -hmm. strong gun. But I always yeah. sort of feel like at a disadvantage. Like what'll happen is I'll get into range to use it, and there are times where I have a perfect range, right? But mm -hmm. um, if uh, if you don't, then it always feels like you're a little bit um, outgunned in every situation. It's not the best long range weapon. It's very right. good in a medium range sweet spot, but maintaining that medium range can be really challenging. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I play very aggressively, almost to a fault when I use the car. Like, I'm always just up in people's faces, but um, I mean, that's just kind of how I like to play. I, I have a very twitchy aim style, and I'm able to, I think, I'm able to, you know, keep my aim on target at very, very close ranges very easily. Uh, for a lot of people, that's really difficult to do. Um, you know, they, they have, you know, like, more human sensitivities. Like, mine's, like, super ridiculously high. Um, so it might be a lot more difficult for you to track at that point blank range. So you gotta you gotta work that medium range as best as you can, which is kind of weird with the car because it has a lot of recoil, and if you're trying to aim down the sights, and it's kind of at that funny range where the counterweight isn't like helping you as much as it could be. So I think it's really difficult to do, and you should probably focus on trying to stay, you know, 
to stay like almost within shotgun range whenever you can. Mm -hmm. So you run a really, really high sensitivity and then you just sort of sacrifice it on the long run, a long game, or do you have like a multimodal yes. sensitivity thing? Yes. Because I know some people, um, they're really cool and they play with like multiple levels of sensitivity and they switch yes. them. Yeah, so I'm actually kind of halfway one of those, I guess. I um, actually modified one of my configs, so when I am hip-firing, I have a certain accuracy, and then when I'm aiming down sights, I have a different accuracy, or um, I guess sensitivity, I should say. Really? That's a fascinating idea. Because that, yeah. be, that would be like ideal for like playing like a DMR or something like that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I it's, it's one of my most... Um, I guess one of my favorite things that, that uh, somebody has told me about this game that you can change, you know, and alter, because I think that it's really positively affected my play, and I know a lot of people have benefited from it as well. So I think that's something that maybe you could um, try out as well. But it definitely helps you. You can be really effective at the close range without having that super sensitivity at long range that makes it impossible to use. You, you kind of have the best of both worlds. And it would be much better to have that sync to the ADS as opposed to uh, having to, like, hit a button on your mouse. So I'm definitely going to try that. That's a fantastic tip. I'll look at it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I just wanted to back up here. There was one little segment. I can't quite remember where it was here that I wanted to talk about. Um, I think it was actually it was this right here. So you're trying to shoot this guy, the guy off this guy's back. I noticed you have three satchels in your bag, and you're trying to shoot him with the car. Why not just go for a satchel instead? Just jump forward, satchel the guy right off. Yeah, I uh, I'm I'm always nervous about satchels. I'm not very good with them, even after my challenges for for Gen mm -hmm. Four. Um, I just always tend to kill myself with them. So I don't I don't I I really should just play like a, a really brutally aggressive satchel game and just get mm -hmm. used to using them because I always feel like um, I just feel uncomfortable with them. And they're not bad. I understand they're really good. I understand yeah. the principle that they carry momentum. I just always mm -hmm. feel like they're they're a little bit weaker. Yeah, I mean, I think that yeah, like I mean, you you just hit on exactly what I was going to say is that you know how they carry your momentum. I mean, if you if you jump forward while you're throwing it, I mean, there's not a chance you're going to be able to blow that thing up close enough to you to kill yourself or even really hurt yourself. Um, that was an unfortunate miss on that arc. Like you're, I, I'm. It just pains me to watch you play with the arc because you're getting so freaking close with all these shots that you're missing. It's like it's not like you're like taking bad shots or you're making bad moves. Like everything is is actually very good. Your movement is solid. Your positioning is great, and you're going for the shot and you're you're just falling short a lot of the time. And it's like if it's just more practice, you're gonna be freaking amazing. I know it. Well, thanks. It's it's it is really frustrating. Like sometimes you'll have games where it's just you can't get anything going and. I feel right. like I, I think uh, one thing I, I have, and this is something, is I get this uh, kind of target fixation when I'm moving my mouse. Mm -hmm. And that is that I, I, what will happen is I'll get so fo focused on the target, uh, I'll forget to move my wrist. <laughs> and so you'll see oh. me. Have you ever had that happen where you just lock up and you're just shooting? You're like, oh, why isn't my reticule moving? And you're like, it's because you're not moving your hand, actually, Dave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had yeah, that happen? I've... You get kind of like like locked up because you're so excited about yeah. the shot. Yeah, because like, like you're so focused on one thing and you forget like the most basic stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that happens to me all the time. Yeah. One thing, let's see if I can back up here once more. Um, just a moment here. You is you you take this shot. Well, I guess you accidentally shoot it. You see this guy on the roof. Yeah. You try to aim your cluster, but I notice you're not charging your arc cannon at all, uh, and you just started like you know yeah. five seconds after you shoot that cluster. You're right. That's like, a big that's a big mistake. I can do both at the same time. Right. Yeah. You can keep that you can keep that arc cannon charged all the time. So it's I mean it was it's not a big deal. It's epilogue. You know whatever. But I think definitely there's something to focus on. Is you know is always keep that arc cannon. You know. Pre-charging pre whenever you possibly can. Yeah, I, I'm so you, I was so used to the other the, the the slog that I've never had the capacitor. In fact, this is only my third game with the capacitor. So okay. yeah, so I was I'm, I'm still don't have quite right. that discipline of holding it up. It's one of those things I'm not gonna let myself stop playing the capacitor until mm -hmm. until I get that reflexive hold it up because that's useful for the charge rifle too. I think the yeah. same kind of discipline with it. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting used to it. But, and I do like, you know, when you pop that dash core at the very end, I know it's epilogue, you weren't even fighting anybody, but I like that you're not just mashing your dashes when you have that dash core up, is you were, you know, you were using them intelligently, you're not just, you know, just trying to hit it as fast as you can and just fly, you know, all over the place. You're trying to control your movement. That's really, really good. That's something that you don't see many striders do, um, and, you know, you're, you're already doing it, so. That's awesome. You don't actually get a lot of benefit from mashing it, right? Like, you actually just, um... Uh, there's not a lot of speed difference between the beginning and like the middle and the end of a dash. It seems pretty much, yeah, pretty much. You you have like a short period of I I don't know quite how long, maybe a third of a second if I had to guesstimate, where you're moving at pretty much peak velocity and you don't really gain a whole lot from mashing your space bar. Yeah. The only time that you do benefit is if you're going 
left, right, left, right, left, right with your dashes at max speed because that makes it super hard for people to track hard. you. It's yeah, like, so there's like right around here, I see you shoot a cluster at this atlas, and, and you try, you try to, yeah, you try to direct hit him. You you gotta go for the floor, like just shoot the ground at his feet, and you know it's a much bigger target, and it's a much less moving target that you can more easily hit. I've, I've found over the uh, over yeah, the, you're absolutely right. Many months of playing, so yeah, I would just you know just go for that for that splash, go for the ground shot. That was a nice little shot, by the way. Dashed over and just sw swung right over and got him. That was very nice. Thanks. Honestly, I've really enjoyed using this gun. Of of all the Titan weapons, I I, I don't have the most success with this gun, but I feel it's the most intellectually engaging of the guns. Like you have oh, to yeah, you have to think about it a whole bunch. It can be really effective, but not yeah. only if you. Yeah, I think I think that um, the triple threat also falls in that category as well, yeah. um, just because of how long it takes the um, the beach balls that you're shooting to actually explode. Um, you know, you have like. You have almost like I almost want to say like a counter or not counter strike a Starcraft kind of feel to it like where you have where you're hopping siege tanks you know and you're yeah. trying to, to control um, like lanes on the map with siege tanks and push forward is you know your teammates are your marines you know they're your marauders they're your you know they're your 3M combo and then you're you're the siege tank in the back trying to control a lane and just force them to move back slowly and slowly and give your guys more ground. Um, and that, I think that's one of the most intellectual ways to play the game. It's very hard to do just right, but you know when you have a good triple threat, oh, is it deadly? Yeah, yeah. I, I believe me, I know. <laughs> as a as a Strider pilot, most of the time, mm -hmm. yeah, the triple threat is like it doesn't matter. You, you, the triple threat can be so so dangerous. Even one or two mistakes with a Strider, and you're done. Yep. But uh... but anyways, I think. Um, just to kind of wrap things up, I think for maybe for next time, what we should try and focus on a little bit more is just stick with the car and the counterweight, okay. and just try and focus on being a little bit more aggressive against your enemies. I mean, not to a fault, you know. I mean, you know, meet your aggression. You know, be sure you know get a couple of kills and just kind of hang back for a second. You know, reevaluate the situation. Where do you think enemies are going to be? And just try to intelligently move from spot to spot. But mm -hmm. definitely try to to stick within a little bit of a closer range to your opponents. Try to stick, you know, up on roofs and stuff when you can. Or if you got to be down in the streets, then just try and get some wall runs going, keep your speed up, okay. and I think you're you're going to be doing just fine. I mean, your 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 positioning is pretty much all the way there. It's just trying to get a little bit closer, and um, and I think you'll be rock solid. All right. Well, what I'm going to do then also is I'm also going to try and take more shots with the satchel. I really I'm disappointed with myself in the satchel, so I want to get that up there too. So I'm going to step Absolutely. with the, pretty much exactly this loadout then. Mm -hmm. um, and I will see what I can uh, see what kind of footage I can come up with, and maybe we'll come back. And I'm definitely going to look at that configuration thing that you suggested because mm -hmm. that sounds Absolutely. incredible. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think like you know you've had in the course of this game you've had something like like 18 sassel charges over the course of all your deaths, and you threw maybe one or two. Yeah, so exactly. definitely yeah, so definitely try and focus on using those a little bit more whenever you can, and I I think you're going to be very very uh, successful. All right. Well, thanks. I'll get back. We'll, we'll come back um, in, in a while, and we'll see if I can do, do any improvements with this, and uh, probably be next generation up, too. Excellent. Gen 6 satchel action coming up. All right. Thank you very much, Frothy. This is fantastic. And folks, um, hey. if you have any thoughts on this, if anything you'd like to see, uh, or you know, any thoughts on how we can improve the dialogue, this is a new project for both of us, and I really, you know, as you know, enjoy your feedback. Also, I'm going to link Frothy's channel in the description. I know not much about Titanfall compared to Frothy. He's pretty much the man. He is pre precognizant with this game. So I strongly recommend that if you're interested in Titanfall at all, and you should be, that you should check out his channel. I think you're also doing some other stuff with a few new games now. Hey, well, thanks. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, so I've been doing a couple of videos for Evolve. I got into the Big Alpha recently, so I've been doing um, getting a couple of guides out for that. Uh, oh, yeah. People have been liking them quite a whole lot, and I've been loving that game. So, so much fun. It's, so much fun. Oh, God, yeah. Dude, the, I love playing as the monsters so yeah. much. It's it's great. Um, I also just got Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, so I'm definitely going to be trying to put out a couple of videos of my own as well for that. Now, I know that there's a lot of channels out there, like Drifter is probably a big one who does pretty much the exact same thing that I do but for Call of Duty, so I'm definitely not going to try not to step on toes and try to do my own stuff, you know, maybe some rollout guides, maybe some map guides, you know, stuff like that, stuff like you're not going to see from other channels quite as much, so, you know, hopefully that's something that you guys could enjoy as well. All right, well, I'll, I'm definitely going to be watching. Uh, everybody, you should take a look at it too. Link's down in the description. Thank you, Frothy. Hey, thanks for having me. Take care.